Hello, everyone, and thanks for listening and watching the Italian American Entertainment Podcast. And I'm your host, Vin Shirelli. And today we have the great singer and entertainer, Lena Prima, with us. And uh, with five albums to her credit, award winning singer, artist, and author, Lena Prima is the youngest daughter of the legendary musician, Louis Prima, and his singing sidekick and wife, Gia Mayone. So, welcome, Lena. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Very good, and uh, very nice to speak with you. Uh, I forgot to tell you before we started recording this, but uh, we should have actually met in person last year, 2020, at the uh, Kenner Italian Festival. I was supposed to perform oh. with my band, and I know you always perform there, so unfortunately, oh, we, we didn't gosh. get to. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get to come down last year, and uh, hopefully, I don't know about this year. I know it's usually in March or April, I think. So I, I doubt. Yeah. Uh, It'll be happening, but uh, hopefully we'll get to right. <laughs> meet in person sometime soon here. But once yeah. again, uh, welcome to the show. And um, how I usually start this with all uh, my guests is, since it's about uh, Italian-Americans, uh, where you're located now, where you live now, but to where in Italy do you trace your ancestry? Uh, well, my uh, father's side, um, his his father's side, Salapruta. Uh, Sicily and um, Ustica, his mother was from Ustica, actually born there, a little island off of Palermo. Okay. And my mother's side was northern northern Italy. Okay, very cool. So, um, of course, we'll get into uh, your musical, you know, <laughs> life and uh, you performing and all that. Uh, but something very interesting to me, and I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but, uh, you know, you not only had one famous and influential musician, uh, your father, of course, uh, the great Louis Prima growing up, but your mother, Gia, was also, you know, a great musician and singer. And so how was it, you know, growing up um, with two parents that were very influential, great musicians, famous, and traveling and being on the road? And uh, how was that experience for you as a child? Oh gosh, I, I loved it. It was magical. And, you know, for a little girl, um, you know, to me, my parents were like movie stars. You know, my mother was so beautiful and, and had such an amazing, beautiful singing voice. And of course my father was just a big cartoon character of a guy and he was, um, so joyful, so joyful and charismatic, you know, at home as a dad. So, I had an extremely magical, it was short, of course, because my father became ill when I was just 10 going on 11. So oh, wow. it was a short time, but I luckily was such an aware child and I paid so such close attention that I, I took it all in. So I'm, I'm just so blessed that I had, have that gift of a great memory and, and that awareness because I just... It was just a magical childhood. I'm so grateful that I got that experience. Well, I could I could only imagine. And uh, I was going to ask this a little later, but um, you know, with the uh, with your parents, of course, you were young. So you said you were uh, well, you were very young. But did you really know at the time? Like, when did you first know that your dad and your mom, but uh, was such a big deal? I, did you really know as a child or did it take like into high school or getting older? That no, really... I, I, I absolutely did know. I okay. absolutely did know. And um, got, you know, luckily got to experience, you know, my father at that time in his life and career, he was older. So he wasn't, um, he did go on the road, but not as much as I, as when he was younger. So he was always there for holidays and birthdays and and such. Mm. And, and then we actually traveled with him during the summers and during holiday breaks from school. So I got to grow up on basically in the audience or on stage or in the sound booth mm. or lighting booth or wherever kids were allowed wow. to be <laughs> uh, and experience the whole thing. And my first real amazing experience you know, I guess, gosh, when did Jungle Book come out? 1967. So Seven, yeah, yeah. I was just little. and But I remember sitting in the middle of that theater to see Jungle Book. And <laughs> when his voice was coming out of the cartoon, <laughs> Monkey, I was just, I couldn't believe it. Like it was, how did my dad turn himself into a cartoon? You know, so right. he That's... just was bigger than life to me. And I, I definitely had that awareness that he was super special. 
That's very cool. So coming from a musical household and, uh, you know, having talent on both sides, your, your fa- father and your mother, did you always know you wanted to be in the music business or did that come later? Uh, how did how did you or, you know, from the beginning, did you know I'm going to be a singer? I guess it just was a natural thing. You know, I sang on stage from the time I was five with with my parents. And so I was up there and it just felt natural. So, uh, you know, when I got to high school, you know, I was in plays and things in school. But when I got to high school, I was really into it. I was in the singing groups and the, um, uh, you know, art and singing and dance. And I just, I guess, just natural. As soon as I was out of school, I went to an LV in Las Vegas for a couple of semesters, but I was really only interested in being a performer. So I joined a band at, at 19 and I worked a day job and then I worked in bands at night starting from age 19. Wow. Wow. So, um, what do you remember like your very first big show, like where, you know, we've all, uh, especially you growing up, you were on stage with your parents and, you know, things like that. But do you vividly remember the first time you got on a stage and thought, oh, wow, you know, people are actually here to see me. This is a, you know, <laughs> they're, <laughs> that type of show. Do you do you remember well, when that might have happened? But with my dad, I remember that first moment of, of singing on the microphone with him when I was five and wow. all the people in the audience in the spotlight in my eyes and everyone smiling and it I, that feeling, I'll never forget that. That was an amazing feeling. And then just for me personally, I guess, gosh, I don't know. I, I had a lot of big shows. I was a rock singer. So I was in the rock and roll world for a while until um, I transitioned over in my late twenties into um, performing in cover bands so I could work full time. So sure. When I was a rock singer, I had a lot of moments like that because we did big shows and concerts. We opened up for other popular, you know, famous rock bands. So that, oh, cool. that was really exciting and fun. <laughs> and then oh, I sure. didn't have that experience of that again until I went out on my own in 2000 and put my own show together and started doing a tribute to my dad. And then I had some big, wonderful moments there. That's cool. I always, uh, me being a musician, I'm a singer and a uh, guitarist, uh, but yeah. uh, I always like asking other musicians and singers this, uh, do you still get nervous when you go on stage? Oh, I, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Cause you know, we care, we right. care about doing a good job and we don't want to fail and we want people to like us and like what we're presenting to them. So I, I, I absolutely do still get nervous. Okay. So I, uh, I like asking this, too, since it's about uh, Italian-Americans, of course. But, of course, you had your father, which, you know, I ask a lot of musicians this. Uh, who's your biggest Italian-American influence? And, of course, a lot of them say your father. But outside of your father, did you have, um, you know, a big Italian-American influence uh, or someone that still influences you today uh, for the oh, Italian-American side of things? You know, as it, it is my father, I, he was it. I mean, we, you know, we listened to, I, you know, I love Frank Sinatra too. And my father loved Frank Sinatra. In fact, I have this great story about uh, when Frank was, it was like in the 70s, early 70s, he was doing a, some sort of big comeback concert and it was televised. And he, my father put three chairs in front of the television, right in front of the television set, <laughs> like not sitting on the couch, but <laughs> right in front and he made me and my younger brother and him, and we sat and we watched and he cried and we applauded. Huh. And he said, this is the greatest singer of all wow. time. And he wanted us to experience it. And we were so little that, you know, we watched, but I was mostly watching my dad's reaction. And right. I, I was fascinated by how he felt about this other entertainer. Wow. So That's Frank Sinatra, great. I guess I'd have to say, would be the other <laughs> Sure. So your dad, uh, you know, growing up with that, did, you know, of course he was playing music all the time on the road, but was he always playing music at home too? Do you remember? Um, he, well, he rehearsed often and it wasn't in our home. He, you know, we had another, um, we lived on a golf course that he built. So there was another home where there was the clubhouse and there was a rehearse, there was a recording studio and a rehearsal place okay so he rehearsed often over there but he he would take the trumpet out and he liked to show me how it worked and 
I, I was fascinated by that too and how he made noises with just the mouthpiece and stuff so yeah <laughs> he did that kind of thing but he was mostly very funny at at home oh really everything was light there was no um ever anger or stress or i i don't know how to describe that but he was always mm. funny like everything was he made a joke out of everything and it was quite fun to be around him I could imagine just watching, yeah. you know, videos of him. He was such a character on stage. Not only was he, you know, had the musical ability, but uh, he he definitely had the touch of, you know, being able to entertain people on stage. A lot of people can't say that they might have a beautiful voice and, you know, yeah. all that. But he had all, all, you know, the one thing I actually just saw the other day, um, and I wanted to ask you this. I was reading through some comments about your dad um and how he used to perform and be entertaining on stage and i saw a couple comments from someone i never really thought through this um but that he was like starting rap like he was a <laughs> i don't know if you've ever heard this before but the, oh. the way he used to sing and kind of talk and do stuff like that as i i was reading through some people and they were like and it was a video of you uh him and your mother performing together yeah and uh, someone said uh this was the start of rap and I, they were saying it like in a serious way, like he actually, and I can kind of see that now when someone put that, it's kind of like, you know, that talking and I was, they were doing a song where they were speaking very fast. Oh, um, that's, that, yeah, they were doing, I want you to be my baby. So, and I, I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but when I saw that, I was like, I yes. never thought of it that way, but that's yes, very, I, I definitely have. In fact, I would do that song when I was in cover bands in Vegas in the lounges and people would come up to me and say, mm gosh, that is like the first rap song. <laughs> That's really my, interesting. My dad liked to do those types. Like there was one he they did called You'll Never Get Away. And it was fast like that. And it was a bun- It was a story, but it was a bunch of, you never get away, never get away, never get right. away. You know, really fast. Right. Well, yeah, I definitely he was way ahead of his time yeah no i when i saw that the other day i was like wow that's you know that's crazy i would have never thought of that but did did your dad ever tell you stories or did you hear stories later on in life of you know how some of his big hits were actually written were there any interesting stories about yeah you know a couple of those songs um about how it might you know you hear all these stories about how guys just come up with a song in 10 minutes or something like that it's a huge hit is there any cool stories about one of those songs yeah, his he had a very close friend who was sort of uh, was his tailor, but they were very close. And he, I don't know, like a val, he was kind of like a valet, I guess is what you would call them at that point, where he just was with my dad all, all the time and did little errands for him and things. But he came and told me the story about Sing 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 that my dad had written it um, for Bing Crosby and was inspired by watching the horses race at Santa Anita. And I really feel like that is very possibly very true because if you think about how that song goes and you watch a, if you put it on and watch a hor- the horse, ra- horse races, mm. it, it goes. <laughs> the drums and the intensity right. and the different, you know, turn in the ra- round in the turn. And <laughs> so, and he originally had written, uh, you know, of course, vocal part to it and it was sing being sing hmm, he loved being crosby yeah that's very cool i uh the first time so you are you're still in uh, the new orleans area correct you live in new orleans yes i live in new orleans yeah so i actually the first time and only time so far that i've been to new orleans was right before the pandemic december of 2019 uh, my oh. wife and i went down for two days it was a quick trip and uh oh wow i uh your father's exhibit was at the the museum down oh there. yeah and I think you were actually performing there that night that I was there because um, I remember seeing your name and things being loaded in uh, for some event there. But that that's a great exhibit. I don't know if it's still there or if it's yes, you know, or I, people I, can still go in because of the pandemic and everything. But that was a great yep. exhibit. Absolutely fantastic. And so um, he really deserved that that sort of, um, you know, honoring him in that way with that magnificent of a of an exhibit you know that wound around like three different rooms and the yeah you could sing along and then do some dance moves and those cardboard cutouts but it was I just was blown away when I yeah. when I saw it I, absolutely amazing and I took took a couple of groups of people through there to tell stories and it just I don't know I walked in there and felt like oh it's my house <laughs> yeah no it was very cool they did a great job I'm glad I I'm glad ah. I went my wife was there for a a work uh 
conference or something. And so I had just a day to walk <laughs> New Orleans by myself. And I cool. saw that. I was like, oh, I got to go to this. And so oh, I'm glad you went. Yeah, no, it was amazing. Um, so since you're in New Orleans, you know, of course, New Orleans, uh, big Sicilian population, Italian population, but also you don't have to, <laughs> I think everybody knows the music that comes out of there, but, uh, other than new Orleans, um, and performing down there, do you have, uh, one or two favorite venues you play all over the country, but is there, um, outside of new Orleans, like a festival or a venue that really sticks out to you that you love to play? Oh gosh. You know, I love, I just love the whole experience of traveling and performing in different cities and different venues. I, I enjoy, I'm always in the moment, enjoy it anywhere but I guess I really like the um the Smith Center in Las Vegas they had built this beautiful venue and then uh, Myron Martin uh has the Myron's uh jazz cabaret room in in the Smith Center and it's just a fantastic room it's got an intimate vibe but it's it's fairly large and the sound is amazing and the stage is wonderful and it just it's a it's a great place I've played there a Mm -hmm. few times and I record I released my uh, Lena Prima big band live in concert, which was recorded there last year. So okay. um, that, that's a favorite, that's a favorite place to go. And because I was born in Vegas, I get to see a lot of friends and. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah. And I was just going to ask you too. So you have, I was listening to that, uh, some of those tracks from that live album. Uh, great, great stuff. Uh, I got to listen Thank to the you. rest of it. Uh, Thank you. But uh, tell us a little bit about your two latest albums. So you have your last studio album uh, was released last year or the year before. Uh, yeah, Prima La, Prima La yeah. Familia. So you got that one. And then you yeah. also, like you just mentioned, the live yeah. album. So tell yeah, tell the, the listeners a uh, listeners a little bit about uh, what those are all about. Yes, and that's these are actually that's actually the sixth and seventh album. I, I feel like you had an old. Sorry, you had an oh. old, old bio. <laughs> seven albums now, but oh, okay. Uh, Prima La Familia was um, just an incredibly amazing project that um, we worked on for almost a year, um, doing the charts and and um, you know gathering the material and really wanting, I personally wanted to take these songs that were so important. They're, you know, mostly novelty songs. Some are not, of course, but that were important to Italian Americans starting from like the late thirties and all throughout the decade songs. I grew up with songs my dad recorded as well as others and wanted to just make this modern big band, you know, version of all these wonderful song. So that was the Prima La Familia album, which um, debuted at number 10 on the jazz Billboard jazz oh, album. Wow. Arch. I was absolutely oh, congrats. Yeah, blown away cool. by that. So <laughs> that happened. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> and then I, you know, this whole thing with the pandemic and this was just so depressing. And I thought, God, there's gotta be a way for me to release something and make somebody happy out there and remember these live experiences. So I had this show that we videoed at the Smith Center in Las Vegas. And um, I thought, gosh, maybe I, I kind of learned how to edit. <laughs> so I did everything myself and the artwork and everything. And I put this wow. album out there. And um, I, I'm happy that I did because when I listen to it, I get that feeling of that night it was a very special night, you know? So no, that and was it's great. live. I always love a live album. Oh yeah, I thought those are my favorite. Live albums are the best. There's nothing you, you do. Can, you can't hide anything on that. It's not yeah. you know you can't overproduce it or anything. So I I liked. I was listening to it last night with my son, uh, and one of. Uh, my my favorite song that your dad did was Five Months, Two Weeks, Two Days. And my band. You and me both. That's my favorite song that he does. Come on. on. <laughs> I'm right now because, man, yeah. that's my favorite too. That's my favorite. And uh, it's my wife's favorite. And my band, it's usually the, the second to last or right at, towards the end of all our shows. We do Five Months, Two Weeks, Two Days into Jump, Jive, and Whale. And then I saw you did that as well. I was like, wow, that's oh great. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's great. Uh, we love doing that. Those, those are the two, the only two Louis Primo ones we always do. And How I was like, funny oh, that you put those two together too. I know. I, I hadn't seen anyone else do that. And I was yep. like, well, it's... His daughter, of course, <laughs> you should do it, and that's great. That's awesome. So, yeah, that's that was a awesome. that was a great version that you did. So I loved it, and my son loves it too because he loves when I play that song. So that's um, great. That yeah. makes me happy. That makes me really happy. <laughs> yeah. So what? Uh, 
it seems like since you were 19 years old, of course, professionally on the road and yeah. playing music, but uh, out of all those years, what do you, and still, what do you love most about your career as a singer and a, and a entertainer? Well, I love performing live. I love to record as well. And um, I love performing live. I like to see people being happy and excited and dancing and enjoying themselves. And um, I love my band. Like I love having that great, those great musicians around me and being on stage and feeling that incredible energy. Um, so all of it, I love all of that experience. Um, and it is about love really. I mean, the, the music and you got to love it right. <laughs> for oh, me. Yeah. It's like, it, and you give it out to the people and they give it back to you. And it's a, it's a wonderful experience. I really hope it all gets to come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I hope so. I hope uh, I'm excited to come play in, you know, Kenner, New Orleans area at that festival. I, I've sure. heard it's a, I've heard it's a beautiful Italian festival. I was looking it forward is. to it last year. And then, of yeah. course, and then I don't know about this year. Um so maybe early 2022, we'll be able, I'll be able to come down. I hope it doesn't take yeah. that long, but who knows? God, yeah, I hope <laughs> so. So, too. so it's, uh, you know, my grandfather was an Italian musician. He came from Sicily and started a record label and nowhere near the fame wow. of your father. Yeah, but nowhere near the fame of your father. But cool, he's well, though. yeah, he's well known up here in the Chicago area and uh, Midwest and traveled a lot and, did, you know, recorded a lot of music. And uh, so my, I always knew I wanted to be a musician and uh, it's hard to find someone else that uh, is that way, you know, loves music, but also does it on a deeper level, which is the legacy portion. And so that's why this is kind of cool to, for me to ask you this because you're doing it for your father and I'm doing it for my grandfather. So I actually started out 16 years old playing in bars. I probably shouldn't have been in doing pop rock songs and all that. And then, yeah. And so then it was one day, it's just like, Someone told me, they're like, I used to, I love Italian music, but they're like, you know, you have this niche of Italian music and you're young and your grandfather. And so when my grandfather started getting older and ill right before he passed away, I went all into playing the music he wrote and the songs he taught me. Oh, man. uh, So I want to ask you, you know, it's hard for me sometimes. My grandmother's still alive, and I'm sure she's going to watch this. And uh, it's harder for me when she's at a show, and she almost comes to all of them that she can uh, when we're playing locally. But uh, I get very emotional sometimes when I play one of the songs that he wrote specifically, uh, especially when we're on a big stage, you know, when we play one of the big Italian festivals. Uh, Sometimes it's very hard for me to sing. And I don't know, I'm sure it happens to you. Um, but do you have any, um, people think I'm nuts when I say this, but, um, I actually had an Italian, uh, medium on, uh, this show a couple months back and I told her this and I said it on the podcast, but every time I play a big festival, whether it's, we're in California or New York, wherever, I always see a butterfly (laughs) when we're playing and I get, I just know that it's like my grandfather's there. Uh, do you get something like that uh, with your father when you're playing his music? Do you get very emotional or have like some attachment to something that you see, like you know he's watching? Well, I do have the penny thing uh, that started happening to me um, very early on. Like when I first started um, singing and stuff at, at 19, I started with the pennies and and it was just crazy the places I was finding them. And at, at mm. the time in my life, I was finding them. And so it just continued on. And so I started telling the story about these finding these paintings and just knowing they were a sign for my dad, because I would find them in crazy places at crazy moments where the odds, I was doing the odds calculation. What are the odds? <laughs> right. I find a penny right here, right now, you know? So mine is the penny thing. And it never lets me down. Um, mm. I have felt feelings of him being with me sometimes when I'm singing, especially for some reason, Buena Sera. When I sing Buena Sera, something happens. It's not always, but it's mm. been many times wow. where I get this strange feeling like, like he is there. Right. And I don't know why it's that song. I don't know if he particularly loved that song a lot. I don't know, but I, I have an interesting experience 
during that. I got to talk to your medium. <laughs> she's very, she has her own podcast. It's called A Night with a Medium. I'll have to hook you up because she's, uh, she's an Italian American and she interviews a lot of Italian American celebrities and things on her shows too. So I'll hook you up. Maybe she can do a reading for you if you want. <laughs> yeah. And she's, I got to tell you that it happened one time on stage and I looked over and my trumpet player who's been with me for many years was looking at me really strange. He goes, I feel like I saw your dad or I felt you. I was like, uh oh, I did too. Whoa, yeah. you know. It happens to see my uncle uh, is in my is the bassist in my band, so we got the family connection. Cool. That my my grandfather was his father, and uh, I'll I was. It was the first year we actually took the show on the road for Italian festivals, and uh, we played Milwaukee Fest, and uh, I don't know if you've ever played up, up there. Yeah, that was a great one, yeah. Yeah, and so the, you know, those are huge stages, of course, uh, sure. and, you know, the first time being on a giant stage like that, and yeah. uh, it was the year after my grandfather passed away, and we had just started doing this, and uh, I remember the band, my guitarist felt something with me. I was singing my grandfather's song and it was just like this <laughs> rush That's of like great. something's here and then I yes. Frank, my guitarist looked over and was like something weird's happening right now and it was okay like, so we yeah. both had the similar <laughs> yeah we've That's yeah awesome. we both felt it it's interesting they yeah. still make fun of me about the butterflies but I'm telling you I see a no, butterfly <laughs> every <it's> time That's <laughs> real. <laughs> <laughs> it is I believe in that so yeah, yeah. so um some of the stuff I've read, uh, you're also a big proponent, of course, of Italian American culture and music and everything, which is great. And uh, did you? I read something that you had started your own little foundation. Is that still a thing? Or uh, I did. I I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep it up, um, but I am going to continue to honor. I will still keep the Chow women name, and um, still honor. Italian American uh, women and girls and and families in the community. Once we get back into being a community sure. again, uh, but sure. yeah, I did start that, and I was able to um, honor some wonderful young women. And like, I would give out three awards, and then uh, my good friend Charles Marsala, he also has an Italian organization, and we got together and we'd honor our family together, and just really, really wonderful to recognize. Um, and and inspire other Italian Americans in the community and lift lift everybody up. So that was really my main reason for doing that. And I hope it gets continued. Yeah, I yeah. hope so. So what uh, following with that and you know promoting Italian Americans, what is your hope for the future of Italian American entertainment specifically? And um, do you have a good feeling that there's um, you know, others like us and even, you know, even younger or younger than me too, that are going to be coming up, you know, that continue this tradition going. Um, oh, I like yeah. asking that to, to all my guests because everyone has a different answer about it, but uh, all in all, do you have a good feeling uh, about the future of Italian American entertainment? I absolutely do. Absolutely. Because it's up to like us. Mm -hmm. And then I do see younger um, Italian American entertainers, that are proud and, and singing Italian music and stuff. So I absolutely have a great feeling about that. And we, as long as we keep doing it too and talking about it and, and recording Italian songs and making that a part of our, you know, I do all kinds of music, but man, the Italian part of it, it's like, I feel a responsibility. Don't you? I mean, like oh, yeah. to that, this is our, my father taught us, taught me to be proud and this is our heritage and, and he was so such a hero to Italian Americans. So I feel a responsibility to continue that as well. And then I feel like that really is a ripple effect because when we keep doing it, it's just going to continue. We'll inspire others to do it younger and younger. And so, yeah, I have, I of course have a very positive feeling about that. Yeah. And you, especially from the new Orleans area, um, you know, being from the Midwest and there's a lot of, a lot of people don't realize that they think East coast when they think Italian Americans, but you know, sure. the Midwest has a lot of, um, Italians and specifically Sicilians where I live in Rockford, Illinois, it's all Sicilians. Oh yeah, Rockford. <laughs> and, uh, so, but you know, even myself, uh, you know, I'm a hundred percent Sicilian parents born there, all that stuff. And, cool. you know, living here, I never thought of New Orleans, and nor did I even know until recently that New Orleans was such a huge, 
you know, Sicilian Italian population and the influence on, it, on, on jazz. And I think, you know, the more I keep even learning about it, I went to the, um, the Italian American little museum too in, in New Orleans and they got that wall of all the Italian Americans that contributed to yeah. jazz. Yeah. And it's pretty amazing. You know, you, I think it's a little underrated of, uh, how much Italians actually contributed to jazz music. I don't think people realize, you know, they, they might think, uh, they know who your dad is and, you know, how much he did and all the songs and, oh, sing, 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 or jump, jive, and wail. But they don't realize that that was a big deal, <laughs> you know, especially for a Sicilian or an Italian to be writing that type of music and to really push, you know, jazz mu- uh, music forward. Uh, it's pretty amazing. And I, uh, I'm i still amazed by all these Italian jazz musicians I never even heard of that that did so much. It's pretty amazing. So It is, it is uh, amazing. And I didn't know it either um, until I moved here nine years ago and then boom I was right in the middle of it and I was just blown away I I had no idea you know right so um it's been an incredible experience learning about it and uh, gosh you should really talk to Charles Marsala sometime because he is just the guy here for Hmm. everything Sicilian oh wow I'll have to (laughs) have to reach out to him and uh you know of course the Italian um the museum, Frank Maselli. I don't know if you've ever talked to Frank, but or been no. to the museum is. I yeah, I have, but I never talked to him. Yep. Yeah. Did you go in when you were here? Yeah, I did. Okay, yeah. so you saw it when it was mm-hmm. uh, all new and re- renovated yep. and pretty yep. pretty amazing. Yeah, it's very nice there. And yeah. um, so before we get to the end here, uh, I wanted to ask you something too. Have you ever been? to where your grandparents were from? Have you ever visited over there? No, and I started talking about t- doing some sort of trip um, when all, right before all this happened, right, right before, before all this happened. You know, I had right. my organization and trying to figure out how to make something like that happen. So I haven't gone there. I did get to go to um, Florence and perform at a wedding. So I did get to go to Italy oh, wow. <laughs> to perform, and that was amazing. So <laughs> at least well, I've so- been to Italy. Yeah, Sicily, you'll have to go down, you know, especially you being Sicilian. Uh, yeah. It's a different world. Down. I've only, I spent uh, a month in Sicily and then just wow. a couple of days like in Rome. Um, and Sicily is, it's a deep connection when you get there. It's, 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 yeah. it's amazing how beautiful it is there and yeah. you know, how old and everything like that. So, cool. um, well, how, uh, how do people find out more about you? Do you have any like big stuff in the works? Uh, how do they buy your CDs? All that fun stuff, you know, yeah, website, all that stuff. I do have an, uh, a website, lenaprima.com. Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well. It's at Lena Prima on Instagram and uh, Facebook is Lena Prima official. Um, I do have an email list on my website you can sign up for. And I do stay, try to update everybody with what's happening. Of course, nothing is happening right now. New Orleans has gone back right. to phase one at this point. So we're not really sure, you know, okay. when there will be live performances we're hoping for, we were hoping for spring, but I'm not sure. So, but that, but if you sign up, at least I can, we can all stay in touch and I do answer my emails and I do post myself on social media. So if you have questions or you want to, you know, go back and forth and talk, we can do that. And I try to keep everybody updated with what's happening. So, well, very cool. Well, I'll uh, include links to your website and all your social media so people can uh, check you out and great. find out more information and get your get your music. Uh, like I said, your live CD is great. I've started listening to it, so I hope other people can uh, can buy it and start streaming it online because it's yeah. It's, I uh, do have um, some vinyl of my Prima La Familia. And I do have oh, physical cool. copies of the new CD, but I, I appreciate anybody purchasing directly from my website because then I, w- I will get 100% of the profit from that. Yeah, that's a big thing for us musicians. <laughs> Spotify yeah. doesn't help us out very much. No, not right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. Yeah. But, uh, well, I appreciate you coming on. I hope, uh, you know, a lot of the shows that we perform, uh, you and I both are Italian-American festivals, and I hope... Uh, they can survive because it's hard enough without COVID for those guys to survive. And so now with it, it's like, it's a little scary. I'm seeing some of them that I used to play for years at starting to disappear. And, uh, I hope, uh, it, it's people like us though. We got to spread the word. So people keep uh, supporting Italian American culture. So, uh, I hope, uh, 
whether it's later this year or next, I uh, hope to meet you in person at that festival in Kenner. So, yes. <laughs> and yeah, and once, once again, thank you very much. And uh, once again, everybody, thank you for listening to the Italian American Entertainment Podcast. I'm your host, Vincirelli, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Ciao.